Oh, that's an unusual piece. Looks like the top's chipped, but maybe it was a perfume or some kind of import. Interesting. Oh, here we go. That's really something. in Yankton, South Dakota. Property records for the house behind me say it was built in 1885, so it's likely there's some pioneer era artifacts buried out back. I got permission to excavate the backyard, so we'll head back there. I took a closer look, and this architecture appears to be all original. If you notice the peaks on the crown moldings above the windows, that's typical of an 1880s era house. Here's the back lot. I gritted and probed. And back here on the property line, you'll see the ground's been disturbed a bit. We ended up digging a pit there. It dated back to around 1910. So you'll see these marks I kicked in the ground. I believe there's another spot to dig. This could be a lot earlier since the house was built in 1885. There is a fence post in the way that we'll have to dig around. So we'll see how it goes. recommend having utility lines marked out. We have just about every type of line running through this pit. Here's a gas line, a power line, and a cable line. And just beyond these, we're getting into some kind of pit. I have three bottles showing. Looks like some kind of a drugstore bottle. That's got some good age. That's circa 1905. Another one. Same age. This might be a shoe polish. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I, I believe it is a shoe polish. Uh, these are usually embossed with Whitmore, Boston. You can see on the back side, this one had a paper label. It's too far gone to read. I'm fairly certain this was from the Whitmore company though. We just found this medallion. It's from the Kirkendall Jones and Company. It says school shoes in every pair is warranted. On the back side here, it's from the Exposition Universelle, 1889. This is really cool. It seems to be it's made out of brass. It has an awesome design to it. And you can see we're down past the first clay cap layer. Starting to get into some trash. It's like uh, another shoe polish bottle. Tooled top, no embossing. And another. This is 120 plus years old. Oh, old sad iron. I find a lot of these, it's got a cold handle attachment to it. A lot of these I find are from the Enterprise Manufacturing Company. There's all kinds of blocks down here. Huh. Fill only to here. Huh. That's all it says. That's unusual. It almost looks like some kind of ink bottle. It's a tooled top. Huh. It's like maybe 
maybe a ketchup bottle on the way out. Let's see. Huh, patented June 1890, H.J. Heinz Company. That's the same Heinz Ketchup Company that's in business today. It's got a tooled top and some kind of a monogram on it. H.J. Heinz Company, Pittsburgh, trademark. Oh, we have lime. It's a good sign we might be getting into an outhouse pit. They used to throw lime over the pits to neutralize the smell way back when. Some kind of semi-porcelain plate. Sebring's semi-vitreous porcelain. And the layers are starting to soften up, so I think we're getting into something here. Tappen, German cologne. It's kind of melted, but that Tappen's German cologne. I've dug these before. Oh yeah, I don't think this pit's been cleaned out. Ah, oh, look at that picture. That's beautiful. It's got a face on it. it looks like a lady's face. Oh wow, some kind of pressed glass pitcher. all these bottles. Huh. Some kind of a apothecary bottle of some sort. Tooled top. Vapo Cresoline Company. Patented July 17th, 1894. Vapo Cresoline has these ridges on it. Sometimes uh, toxic products had ridges so that folks would be able to feel it in the dark and know not to consume it. It's like another shoe polish. Oh yeah. And there's remnants of the brush inside of it. Well, this may be another shoe polish. No embossing on it, but it's a tooled top. This pit is loaded. Wow. Warranted KT and K granite. That's a plain whiteware piece. There's four pieces exposed. It's like maybe another polish bottle of some sort. Shoe polish. No embossing, tooled top. You can see the color change. Those are all undigested seeds left over from an outhouse pit. Another polish bottle, Benton Holiday and Company, Chicago. Never dug one of these before. Ah, there's stuff everywhere in here. Huh. Some kind of a pickled goods container. Could have contained relish or even pickles.
another whiteware plate, Ironstone China, J&G Meekin, Hanley, England. This was a popular company around the turn of the century. I gotta get this one out. <laughs> That's really something. Excelsior Drugstore, F.A. Brecht, Yankton. It's got an eagle on top of a mortar and pestle. Wow. This pit is no end in sight. I noticed this turquoise color here. This is an unusual color for a plate. It's got a number on the bottom. That's wild. That is absolutely wild, that pattern. Wow. like another shoe polish bottle, tooled top. A ah, turn mold English ale. Got some broken lantern pieces. Wow, I'm amazed at how much stuff is in this pit. I just hear all the bottles clicking down there. There's a turn mold wine bottle. Looks like a applied top. Kind of decorative plate. They must have thrown it because it broke. It's like a ironstone coffee cup. The handle's broken off. That must have been why they discarded it. What is this? It's like a flower pot of some sort, or maybe a bean pot. It uh, says fire something on the bottom. Looks like there's actually uh, burn marks. They must have been cooking out of it. That's a old mason jar, a ball with the mason's patent, November 30th, 1858. Awesome. Huh. Panel piece, Phillips wheat phosphates. Never heard of one. It's a tooled top. Lydia Pinkham's vegetable compound. This was a very popular product around the turn of the century. Oh wow, that's an old beer, that's an applied top. Oh, it's got some English markings on the bottom. You know what, this could have been an ale or it actually uh, may have contained liquor, either or. This is unusual. I don't even know what this is. Looks like it's got some floral pattern on it. Some kind of decorative piece, no doubt. And another Lydia Pinkham's. This was actually uh, marketed towards females for all female complaints, I believe an advertisement read. This one dates back to the 1890s.
old uh, tool top beer bottle. SBNG Company. That's the Streeter Bottle and Glass Company of Streeter, Illinois. Sort would have been sealed with a cork before they used pry off caps for beer bottles. Ah, tool top. Likely another shoe polish. Some kind of stationary product. Looks like a liquor flask of shoe fly style. Usually held whiskey, brandy, something along those lines. Lamp chimney. These came in all styles back in the day. This was this was a big one, it was too big lamp. Bottle top and another. That bottle. Let's see. Oh, this looks like a prescription style bottle. Uh, wow, Blake style. Uh, E.M. Coates and Son druggists, Yankton, South Dakota. If these aren't common. A bunch of broken lamp chimneys. Pharmaceutical bottle. Hmm. Oh, here's that same style. This one's whole though. Pinkums. I'm down nearly five feet into a solid use layer. This pit has never been cleaned out. It is completely intact. We've got a few more pieces exposed, including one that could be really good. It's like another tooled top shoe polish bottle. Uh, this one looks like it's a Hutchinson soda. Feels intact. Yeah! Fred Schnauber, Yankton, South Dakota with a mug base. That is awesome. It's like a crock lid. May have been used for a chamber pot. This is solid 1890s. Uh, French square style drugstore bottle. Yeah, E.M. Coates and Son druggist, Yankton, South Dakota. I believe this is an opium vial. I've always been told these contained opium. And another shoe polish. Whitmore, Boston, USA. Five pieces exposed in the southeast corner of the pit. Looks like a Castoria. Dr. S. Pitcher's Castoria. It's a tooled top. Circa 1890s. Oh, that's an unusual piece. It's like the top's chipped, but maybe it was a perfume or some kind of import. It's interesting. Oh, here we go. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, oh, this. This type of stuff isn't usually intact, and it's got an awesome stamp on it. it. Looks like a castle of some sort. That pink, that pink stamp is really cool.
Uh, I believe this was another shoe polish. Would have had a paper label on it. We get a lot of questions about the maps we use. Well, this one's from 1891. and shows this neighborhood. This is the house we're digging behind the pits right about here. I have another map from 1875. And this smudged area is where we're at. I looked closely and didn't see another structure there, meaning this should be the earliest pit on the property. Looks like another Lydia Pinkham's. Okay, the top's knocked off. Yeah, Lydia Pinkham's vegetable compound. Oh, another shoe polish. That's where the label would have been. You can see the indent. A drugstore bottle. Oh, what do we have here? City Drugstore, Yankton, South Dakota. Oh, that's awesome. It's got a shoulder seal on it, circa 1890. And this one, maybe amber? Oh, that's wild. Yeah, it's an amber shoe polish bottle. Would have had a paper label there in the center part. I see some embossing on this thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Worcestershire. This Lee and Perrins. Looks like a... Uh, Hafford. I've never heard of that. Hafford Leicestershire. Wow, I wonder if that was a competitor to the Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> it's a tooled top. Uh, dates back to about 1890. Plenty of ironstone pieces. Looks like nearly a whole plate. See some kind of a stamp. Uh, a very, very weak stamp. You can't read it, but you can see there's some kind of coat of arms, typical with English potters. Ironstone coffee cup, must have broken so they threw it down. Down almost six feet, still haven't found bottom. Look at all this stuff, this is, this is something else. Looks like a little ink bottle. Uh, no markings on it, that's a tooled top though. Uh, what's this, looks like a, some kind of beer bottle. ABG Company. I believe that could be the Adolphus Bush Glass Company. There we go, some whiteware. Warranted KT and K granite. I find these all over the Midwest. Broken lamp chimney. has some embossing. Chicago, Illinois, H.E. Bucklin and Company. Dr. King's New Discovery. I believe this was a sample size medicine. Dates back to about 1890. It's got a tool top. This one was just sticking out. It's another ink bottle. I'm surprised these don't have any stampings on them. Oh, there it is. Looks like some kind of monogram, C, J, and B. Oh, that's a tooled top. Again, an 1890 piece. Now, this lamp chimney. Oh, okay, I thought it was going to be intact, but yeah, these are almost always broken unless they were thrown down by mistake. Still no end in sight. I'm not even sure if I found the walls to this thing. 
I'm blown away. There's a few more pieces exposed. Looks like a drugstore bottle, uh, no embossing on it, circa 1895. What's this? Oh, it looks like a sample, a yeah, sample size liquor bottle. Would have held a shot or something. And another shoe polish. They must have had some awesome looking shoes in this house. Still has the uh, brush handle in it. And some kind of toiletry. Uh, Ed Pinod Paris. Okay, I've dug a lot of these all across the Dakotas. Standard toiletry type piece. Huh. Maybe a beer bottle. Let's see, it's kind of wedged in with a bunch of other stuff. Okay, this gold pattern. That's kind of cool. There's no maker's mark on it. It's a coffee cup. Okay, it looks like it's a hawk wine. Oh yeah, these are always cool to find. The bottles are so long and uh, yeah, this one's a tooled top, the bottom's blown out. These are big bottles, tall bottles anyway. Still a solid lime layer. Haven't found bottom yet. Uh, possibly some kind of little apothecary bottle. It's kind of generic, tooled top. Still into the use layer. Uh, many pieces exposed here. This looks like an ink bottle. I'm surprised none of these have stamping. These are usually Carter's or Sanford inks. It's a tooled top though, 1890s. Looks like some kind of drugstore bottle. Uh, Blake style. Ah, these are never embossed around here. That little prescription. This one could be 1880s actually. And this one is unusual. Uh, wow, it's a little uh, crockery ink. Usually the master inks are crockery, but as yeah, just a standard use bottle, that's wild. Oh, this one's got a paper label. Glue, okay, so yeah, all these, we've been finding they're glue bottles. So get a tooled top, 1890s. Warranted KTNK granite. Huh. Some standard whiteware. And a coffee cup. Oh, it looks to be intact minus the handle. Another one of these kind of clover patterns. Semi-porcelain, I believe. All kinds of stuff down here. A lot of broken ironstone. Broken mason jar. Huh, it's like, it could be another glue bottle. Tooled top, no embossing. KTNK warranted English piece. Got some kind of paneled piece. I think I see some embossing. 
for consumption. Oh yeah, Hazeltine and Company. Piso's Kier. This was a really popular product. It was actually a cannabis medicine. Tool top, dates back to the 1890s. I may have found bottom. Uh, still have a ways to go across though. Oh, that's unusual. That's a really small, like ornate, almost like sample type piece. The bottom's knocked out, it's got a flared lip. Maybe a ground lip actually, huh. Maybe a little pill bottle, possibly a toiletry, made by the Whittle Tatum Company. So a threaded top has a ground lip. 1890s. Got a floral pattern on it, semi-porcelain, kind of a teacup or a coffee cup. The handle broke, so it was likely discarded because of that. I'm working my way across bottom, it's a couple drugstore bottles. Tamman and Frostenson, dispensing pharmacists, yanked in South Dakota. It's got an 1894 patent date on the bottom. And this one, a city drugstore, Yankton, South Dakota. This one's got an 1888 patent date on the bottom. You don't see this style very often with that uh, stamp in the shoulder. It dates back to the 1890s. Hard packed clay, we're done. The pit's all finished up. Everything dated back to the 1890s. Was on par with a typical residence of those days. Here's some medicine bottles. Some drugstore prescription bottles. An above average amount of shoe dressings. Ketchup, that Worcestershire knockoff bottle. A soda, some inks, glues, broken canning jar, several broken lantern chimneys, a few beers, liquor containers, and the ironstone whiteware. All in all, it was a good dig. Look at this filled back in. <laughs> 